Hopefully you've started the assignment and created the React app. If you haven't, don't worry about it because we're about to do it here as well. If you look on my browser, I've created a new empty GitLab account and I've created a empty project. There is currently no pipeline. If we click on some of the documentation. We can see that we actually need a .gitlab-ci.yaml file in our source code to actually kickstart a shared runner. And our runner will use a Docker image. Uh, in this case, I'm using the official node one from hub.docker.com. The shared runner will pull this image down and actually use that as part of our build. Now, if we were using a self-managed runner, I would recommend that you actually have your own Docker registry just for security's sake. So we're gonna use this public image and we're gonna use 12.14.0, which you can find right here. There is many different versions and some of them are much smaller, but we need yarn and we need the bash shell so that we can install some of the tooling. Now you can read more about it here if you want to, but I'm just referencing this. So in the terminal, I've actually already run the command needed to create the React project. And you can actually see that here. So npx create React app, and I just created my app. So instead of running npm start, I can just run yarn start. They're both the same. They just pull different uh, dependencies from different repositories. Let's we'll see what the act looks like. Okay, so it looks like our app is running. Now let's take a look at the actual code inside. What I really want you to pay attention to is the scripts part of the package.json. So when we run npm run or yarn, we can specify one of these verbs here. So start, build, test, and eject. Part of the CI process is actually running the unit tests and the build. So let's try run tests and see what happens. So I need to run, push A to run all the unit tests. And I don't want to watch. So there's one test and it passed. Of course, when we write our application, we're going to have many more unit tests, but we want to have a way to run this automatically without actually user input. So the way that this works is you actually specify an environment variable called CI and you just set that to true and then you can run it again. It will not prompt you. Cool. One passed. And the reason why we need to know that is when we run our CI process, we can't be putting in terminal commands or we can't be interacting with it. It has to run automatically. Let's go back to our source code and actually add the GitLab YAML file. Recall we're going to use the official node 12.14.0 image. That's what we're running locally as well. And you can use Node Version Manager to change your different versions. Uh, at the time of writing, 12.14.0 is the latest long-term support one. And the shared runner needs to specify various different stages. Normally, the stages that we need... Oh, let me change the, uh, the spacing here. So we can define test build, we run our unit test, we want to build our artifacts, and then we actually want to deploy. For this first video though, I'm just going to use test. We'll go back to build and deploy a little bit later. Now I need to name a step. I'm going to call this test. You can actually name this anything you want. You just use a dash or an underscore. and I need to relate it to a certain stage, so test. Actually, I can have more than one different executable uh, steps, and the different steps can be related to the same stage. 
So you can have more than one type of deploy. You might have a deploy for a dev environment. You might have a deploy for uh, production. I'll show you that later. And the script that we're going to run, or the Docker image is going to run, is yarn. So we want to install the dependencies with yarn. And then we want to run the unit test. So just like, just like what we did on the command line. And that's it. That's really our first CI stage. It'll run things in order as well. So if you specify test, build, and then deploy, it'll run all the test stages first, then any stages that are built, uh, that are part of build, and then all the deploy ones. And then we can choose how to specifically turn on uh, different stages. But that's the general order that we want to execute in. All right, now if we go back to the terminal. What I'm going to do is remove the current Git repository because when I cloned it, it still has a Git repository from, from Facebook. And create my own. So this is our new project. I'm going to add all the files. And call this my first commit. Now I need to get the remote URL from GitLab so I can push the repository up there. So go back to my project overview. And here we are, we've got the remote here. I've already added my SSH keys into here, so I won't go into that, but let's push the remote repository. Okay, now if we refresh this page, I should see my source files, okay? Check out our CI CD pipelines. And it's already picked up our GitLab CI file and it's already running on the shared runner. We can see it's running our first stage that we specified. It's now pulling down the Docker image node 12.14.0. And it should run a yarn install and a yarn test. And this is the command we specified here. So it's running a yarn install. It'll fetch all the dependencies that your application requires. So the yarn command is actually built into this Docker image. Same with an npm and node command, but we just happen to use yarn. So all the dependency has been installed and it's running CI equals true yarn test. And the job succeeded. Now if the test failed, your job would fail. And that's actually a good thing because then you can go back and fix your tests. And this is part of the automation that we were talking about. We check our pipelines again. We can see that it passed. Now for the next stage, what I'd like you to do is actually go into your gitlab.ci file, just like this one, and try to put in a build stage. It's very similar to this one as well. The hint that you'll need is that you actually need to specify the artifacts that come out of the build stage. And what you'll need is artifacts, paths, and it'll be built by the default. So that's what you'll need for the assignment coming up. I'm gonna remove that here, and I'll see you in a bit after you finish the assignment.